If you want to hear all three of my theories about hospice, then stick around to the end of this video. Sponsored by Crypt TV. Crypt TV has just brought back Hospice, the hospital ghost story that originally haunted doctors and patients in late 2017. So before we explore the things you missed in the latest episode, let's revisit what happened back in episode 1. Sharon is a nurse taking care of a patient named Mr. Nowak, who suddenly sits up and starts suffocating. Next thing we know, his corpse is being taken away, and Sharon is pretty badly shaken up by the incident. The doctor gives her the option to leave, but she decides to still work her night shift. As the body is taken away, a marble falls off of the stretcher, and Sharon holds on to it. Later that night, one of her co-workers, Jake, asks Sharon to cover for him as he takes off 30 minutes early, leaving Sharon alone in the hospice wing. Shortly after, the lights start flickering before Sharon is attacked by the ghost of Mr. Nowak, who cannot be seen on the security camera footage. When the doctor eventually finds her body, he doesn't seem as shocked as he should be. Not again. So episode 2 starts with a new nurse named Alice Carroll. She's having some kind of vision of a kid being attacked by a monster. We can tell from the symbol on its head and the fangs that this is Brute from the Crypt Monster Universe episode, The Door in the Woods, which is about four kids who accidentally unleash this monster upon their colony. Alice is pulled out of the vision by the sound of flatlining. She reports on the time of death, 11.05. This doesn't match up with the time we just saw on the EKG machine, which could either mean that this is still part of the vision of the kid being mauled by Brute, or this is just a small continuity error because the date also doesn't match the date that they put on the patient's morgue tag either. The doctor notices that she's distressed and tells her, you'll get used to them, the dead. At first, he seems to be referring to her getting used to patients dying, but on closer inspection, he could also be referring to the ghost seen in the hospice ward. Alice offers to wheel the patient down to the morgue, so her fellow nurse, Barbara Hasley, gives her the instructions to take a right at the end of the basement corridor, emphasizing to only go right. Alice's curiosity leads her to go left anyways, after seeing the sign that it leads to the hospice wing, but she gets caught pretty quickly. That wing is closed. It is? Then why is the door open with the lights on? Is there some kind of presence trying to beckon Alice into this forbidden territory? When Alice gets into the morgue, she startles the metalhead coroner Jesus! who's cleaning up blood at the time of her arrival. Alice notices a mortuary cabinet labeled with the name Kane and asks if this is Dr. Kane's son, probably the same Dr. Kane who owns this hospital. Dan tells her that the kid died of heart disease, which doesn't match up with the visions or the fact that he's cleaning up blood off the table when she arrives, though the blood theoretically could have been from one of the others. Alice goes to investigate more about Norman Kane, but before she gets the chance, Barbara shows up and warns her again to stay out of the hospice wing. Back in the morgue, Kane's cabinet bursts open and this monster emerges and throws Dan into a transformer box, causing lights to flicker around the hospital. I like how there's actually a practical reason for the lights flickering, and it's not just explained away by the hospital being haunted. This also ties back into the flickering lights from the first episode, and that leads me to my first theory. Episode 1 takes place after the rest of the season. This can be supported by the fact that the lights were never fully fixed after episode 2, and the fact that the doctor says, not again, after discovering Sharon's body in the first one. The date on the security footage from the first episode is November 10th, just eight days after the death of Mr. Conley in the first episode. My second theory is that Alice has psychic abilities. Upon arriving at the hospital for her first day, she's able to see a vision of Kane's son being killed, and she's even seen rubbing her forehead as if she's focusing some kind of psychic energy. When she goes down to the basement corridor, she takes a left into the hospice wing despite just being told to go right. I feel like there's something from beyond that lured her to go explore in that direction, and she also seems pretty quick to believe in the supernatural when her and Barbara discuss it. Do yourself a favor. Forget what you heard. Why? Are the stories real? Then towards the end of the episode, she goes back to explore the area again, and it looks as if she sees something at the end of the hall, but when we cut to the reverse, there's nothing there. The second theory leads into my third and final theory. Alice's co-worker Barbara is one of the ghosts trying to lure Alice in. If Alice is a psychic, she'd be the only one who'd be able to see Barbara. There's no interaction between Dr. Evans and Barbara in the opening scene. Five years I'm here and he hasn't looked at me once. Barbara also gives oddly specific directions for Alice to only turn right at the end of the basement corridor. It's almost as if she wants to pique Alice's curiosity and lure her into the haunted wing. The other scene with Barbara is again just the two of them, and again, Barbara doesn't provide the specific details about why Alice should keep out of the hospice wing. If you have any theories about hospice and how it ties into the other Crypt series, be sure to let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to Crypt TV for new scary videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every Friday,
Friday they upload a new chapter to the Crypt Monster universe, so click the link in the description so that you don't miss out on any future installments, and as always, I'll see you in the next one, assuming we both survive.